welcome to an eToys Minute or Two with Mr. Steve. eToys and Scratch, perfect together, with eToys 5.0 that is, coming soon. Here I have a Scratch project, and I'm going to enable sensing, remote sensors. So we're going to click on sensing. If you go down to the sensing value tile, we'll come here and click Enable remote sensors. You'll see a pop up that says remote sensors enabled. Now you'll notice I have a script that says when I receive play note, we play this note for two beats. Let's try it. That works, but I want to control this from eToys. Now in eToys, if you go to the object catalog, whoops, sorry about that, you will see a scratch category with a scratch client which I've already dragged out. When you open the viewer you'll see a scratch host. The host is set to the default IP for your local computer. 127.0.0.1 will show up on all computers and you can always talk to the scratch project on your computer. You could also talk to another computer if you know that computer's IP. Now we play the note when we receive a broadcast message called play note. So let's take a scripting tile, scratch client broadcast, sorry about that, and we'll broadcast play note. Now let's try it. Oops, I forgot first, I have to double click <coughs> chat and he opens up. Now, now I have this set play on mouse down. And now if I mouse down on this, you can also make it look more like a piano key by dragging it and coloring it in white if you want it. Which is what I did here. Now what we can do is, when I go here, I am going to, well, first let me set the sound effect for all pages to silence so you don't hear that loud scratching noise. No pun intended. So here again, when I hit the note, it plays. But I want to set the note's value. I'm updating the resistance value to my note, and I'm going to send values at the same time. Now, when I click it, or mouse enter in this case instead of mouse enter. Ah, so let's try 64. You hear a different note. Now if I go over here, I've created a little keyboard and I can actually play a little music. Whoops. This is set to play note over here and I have another script that does that. So I'm going to change that to that. And actually I'm using this script here. I said when I receive play note, I set my dancer's pitch to resistance A sensor's value, and then I play the note. You can get details of this in a blog page I'll do shortly. But now I can mouse over. And you can play music. But what else can we do? Ah, we can use mouse over to control a dancer's movements. Well, what dancer? Well, if I go to my scratch project, you'll see I have a dancer. And he has a couple actions based on receiving pose 0 through 4. So what we will do now is let's move our scratch project over here. Now I set these up so that when I mouse over, he actually goes there. And you might hear a slight tone every once in a while because I still have it on pose zero. So now if I go to the next one, I put the sounds, the poses into a holder, and I'm just going through the holder. And of course I can change the tick rate and make him move slower. Sorry about that. 
and then that's one way to control it. You could also program your own dance moves. So here is one move, and here is another. Another thing you could do is you could have a series of moves. And I can click start this move, go to my awesome one-handed hold. I'm very strong with this move. It takes a lot of strength. And then back to my next move. And of course, you could go through a set of these moves and actually program a whole dance routine. Perhaps kids could take pictures of themselves in different positions and then program different dance routines. Now, another way, just playing around with how to control things, is I have a circle going through, and I have another script here that I can adjust the circle's speed, and every time it sees a red, it increases the holders by one, cursor by one. So if I can increase the speed, you see the clock hand moving faster, and the dancer moving a little bit faster through his moves. And if I slow it down, I can even have it run backwards, which is kind of fun. Let's see what happens. Now here I have one where I color-coded my dancers, and now it depends on what color he happens to hit. He hits a particular dance move. And instead of a number, I created a slider to increase the speed or slow it down. Now the circle was one way to do it, but I thought this was another way to visualize it, where basically I have this line and as it goes over a particular color, and again with the slider I can speed up the moves or slow it down. Scratch and Etoys 5.0, perfect together, coming soon.